Joining us now on this is the day is Father Carlos Suarez, who many might know from the daily mass and Sunday mass here on Catholic TV. He's with a mission immersion trip with Catholic Extension, and thank you so much for being with us, Father. Hey, my pleasure. It's a blessing to be with you and your audience. Um, maybe just uh, uh, talk about where you are, uh, Father, and, and about this trip itself. So right now we're in the city of McAllen, Texas, which is right on the Mexican border. And the reason we're here, there's five priests from the archdiocese, as well as priests from Chicago, Atlanta, and a couple of the dioceses. It's to help priests sort of along the East Coast and those areas that are far from the border to have a greater experience of the reality that migrants face as they come in and the church's response to those situations. And I know you're, you're visiting um, a respite center down there too. Could you, could you tell us about that and, and who you've met so far or who you were planning to meet? Certainly. So we've done three major things. Yesterday there was a visit to a shelter uh, that has taken in migrants. Today we went to a respite center uh, that the diocese here works very closely with a religious sister, Sister Norma Pimentel, where they help those migrants that have been brought in, sort of get acclimated, get food, get some medical care, and then help them if they need bus services to get to other cities throughout the U.S. while they await the adjudication of their migratory process, particularly if they're seeking asylum. Current policies, of course, have changed the reality of how many migrants come in. So the numbers are a little lower nowadays, which is a little artificial because they're still on the other side of the border. They just haven't been able to cross as readily as they had in the past. Sure, sure. I know the, uh, the Chancellor of Catholic Extension, Cardinal Supich, has been uh, generous to the center, but uh, what Certainly. can everyday people do to help make sure that, you know, immigrants continue to be treated with dignity? Well, I think the greatest thing we need to remember is we're dealing with a humanitarian issue. You know, often when we talk about it in terms of policy, in terms of borders, in terms of politics, we forget the very human reality of the people who are in need who make that decision to cross. We also forget our own humanity, that we have a responsibility for our brothers and sisters. And so the center down here that Sister Norman Pimentel runs is always looking for donations. It's always looking for volunteers to help work with the migrants. So what could our people back in Boston and the region do? Certainly donations, prayers, and if they're able to organize groups to come here, see the reality and serve those who are in need here. And, and maybe, I, I know you've only been there briefly, uh, Father, but mm -hmm. talk about some of your uh, reactions to what, what you're seeing down there too, and maybe some, some of your hopes for, for this trip. Certainly, well, I was very excited to come with this opportunity to see these realities, because again, it's something we hear so much about, but it's very different once you put a human face to that reality we reach. And so it's eye-opening, but also heart-opening to see the realities, to think, why do people come? And it's not primarily to take advantage of the system. Primarily what drives most of them is that desperation. If I don't come, if I don't do something, I face death, I face persecution, I face attacks, I face all these things. So to really humanize the issue and to hopefully be better formed in going back home to speak of these things and to help us as a Catholic people to be more aware of our co-responsibility for each other's needs is one thing I've seen here, how the church is addressing it and also a hope to bring back home. Wow. I know Bishop Reed uh, uh, shared about how he inspired he was in, in his uh, mm -hmm. immersion trip last time too. So we look forward to connecting with you again to learn more about uh, your trip. And uh, we hope you have a, a great rest of your trip too. I know you got to catch a bus, but uh, thank you so <laughs> much so for much, yes. uh, taking time to speak with us. We appreciate My it. My pleasure. It's a blessing to be with you and I look forward to continuing our conversation soon. Great. Thank you, Father. All right. God bless everybody.